Hey guys, so for this video I want to do a tier list of all the cards for Slay the Spire and this time we're looking at the Watcher and I know that there's lots of powerful cards in there so it's not a case of which ones can you use to beat Ascension 20 it's a case of which ones are the most optimal, the best cards to pick uh, when you're trying to build a deck so let's not waste too much time, get started on Alpha doing this in alphabetical order so alpha is first so if you think about it alpha beta and omega you have to pay six mana over the course of three turns you have to draw very specific cards and then you get like a instant win dealing 50 damage to everything every turn so it's kind of a, a high risk high reward card and the problem is unless you've got a really small deck and really high card draw it's not going to be consistent enough to justify it when you get to the end. I mean, Act 1, Act 2 is great. Act 3... I would say it, it gets better because you've got more of a deck to build around. If you get at the end of Act 1, you spend Act 2 paring down your deck, getting card draw, you could make it an alpha deck, but generally it's... It's good, but it's just not consistent enough to justify giving it an S tier. Do you know what? I'm going to put it in A tier for now, just because I have personal bias. I really like the card. But I don't know if it's going to stay in A tier for the full game. But, uh, let's think about it in due course. So the next card we've got is Battle Him. It's a power for one, and you get a smite at the start of each turn. And smite itself costs one for 12 damage, and... Uh, how much is it upgraded? Doesn't say how much the smite is upgraded, but if you manage to get yourself double damage, that's like 24 damage for one cost, and you're going to get it every turn. So I'd say it's up there. It's one of the better cards. Uh, would you put it above alpha for an A tier? That's the question I'm asking. Do you know what I think I'm going to do? Put it below alpha for now we'll see how it goes okay next up on the list we've got oh not brilliance let's go back a bit blasphemy now enter divinity so when you enter divinity you get three mana your attacks deal triple damage and you die the next turn if you play this card and even when you upgrade it it's just gonna have retain so it's worthwhile upgrading if you choose to the card but it's just such a risk. It's If you want to stop and do the maths to figure out if Blasphemy is going to win you in the next round, then go for it. But it can become a bit of a curse at times when you know you can't win, you've got it in the first uh, hand, and it's just not worth anything. I mean, you draw Blasphemy with a couple of strikes and defends, and there's no way you're going to win most fights. So with that in mind... It's kind of a extreme card. It's either you totally win or you lose the game. There's no in-betweens, so it's not consistent in that regard. I'm going to put it in C tier for now, but uh, these are all subject to change, so we'll see how it goes. So after Blasphemy, we have Bowling Bash. It'll damage, 7 damage for each enemy in combat. Now, in any other deck, this would be good. But in a Watcher deck, it's just mediocre because there's so many better cards for dealing damage. I mean, it does stack, and you can if you've got it with uh, double damage, you can do, like, what, 14, 28, 36 damage. One of the sentries at the first act. But it's... It's a good card and a great deck, if that makes sense. It's only good. So for that, I'm going to have to put it in B tier. Uh, would I put it in C? Yeah, I think I'll put it in C tier, actually. I'd pick it over a Blasphemy if it was Act 1, but uh, wouldn't go much further than that. So the next card we've got is Brilliance. Deal 12 damage, deal additional damage equal to the mana, oh, sorry, Mantra. You've gained this combat, so really good scaling. If you're synergizing it with other cards that have Mantra, so, if you're not familiar with the uh, 
what happens is when you get 10 mantra you go into divinity so you, you get the extra mana you deal an extra damage but with brilliance it's kind of personally i would take the card in most opportunities and i would manage to pick up another card to help it out but it can just be one of those things where it deals an okay amount of damage to the heart and that's about it it's not gonna win you a game it's nothing like uh like tripling poison or uh blocking it at damage for the full turn it just deals an okay bit of damage so with brilliance uh it pains me to put it in b tier i'm gonna put it let it be just because the overall mechanic of divinity is not as consistently strong as it should be uh, if you get a devotion then brilliance moves up to a borderline s tier high a tier but as it stands at the minute by itself brilliance is just a mediocre card b now carve reality one mana deals six damage and put a smite in your hand it's damage on damage on damage. If you think about it like this, you're paying two mana, and essentially you're dealing 18 damage, which uh, quick maths would be like, what, 34, 36 damage, if you've got it doubled. So, hmm, is Carf Reality a good card? I mean, if you're dealing, if you're only dealing, eight, only dealing 18 damage, uh, it's still a good card to play for two mana. Uh, let's put it in A tier for now. Just because it's worth picking one up if you get one. It can slot into any deck that's got flexibility. It's not tied to a deck that requires other cards to make it work. Uh, but it's just good. It's not brilliant. It's better than brilliance. But uh, we'll put it in AT, bottom of ATF for now. And the next card we're going to look at is... Collect. Uh, pay X mana, put Miracle Plus into your hand at the start of your next X turns. Exhaust. So, pay 2 mana, you get 4 the next turn. Uh, technically, it's more cards to play, but at the same time, it's just gaining more mana. Which is great, but I'm not a fan of these cards where you're playing the card this turn and getting something great next turn you want immediate effect uh, the poison's the obvious exception but uh, with collect if you have chemical x it's fantastic but you could say that about every x card so it's not a fantastic statement to make I'll tell you what I'm going to do with regards to tier list how about we put collect in the C tier above those two because it has got niche uses it's just not consistently regularly good in my opinion so next up we've got conclude pay one mana deal 12 damage to all enemies and end your turn uh, it's good it's really good in one mana to deal that much damage if you go against multiple enemies and you've got double uh, that's going to be what 32 damage if it's upgraded now, it has got one obvious downside, it ends your turn. So, it's situational, but if you have this, then you want to try and end the combat with this. You want, you'll will deal a lot of damage with it. The end your turn mechanic isn't as bad as it first sounds. It's a little bit higher up on the uh, board for me because of that. It's a drawback, but it's not a massive drawback. So... Uh, we'll put it above Carve Reality. And we'll move on to the next card. Uh, Conjure Blade, another X card. Uh, yeah, do something and then you get s something that costs one mana, but you can't play it this turn because you've just played an X card. So, deal loads of damage next turn. Still not that good. But the idea of, like, X equals nine damage, it is... A powerful card there's no denying it uh where is it in this tier list though that's the question so with conjure blade uh we'll put it low a high b 
I was just tearless looking at the minute. Uh, yeah, they'll put it in the A tier. It's just so clunky. I think it needs to go into B tier. Below, it's definitely below brilliance in my opinion. So, uh, let's move on to the next card. Is oh, consecrate, consecrate. I think that's how you pronounce it. Great card, fantastic card. Zero mana, you're dealing eight damage to all enemies, five damage. That is just like a sweeping beam for zero. You don't get the card draw, but still, uh, you want a couple of consecrates in your deck, and then you've got like good damage dealing output. Uh, it's much better than its counterpoint, which is the previous uh, card. What was it called again? Uh, conclude. Yeah. So Consecrate is better than Conclude. Definitely. Uh, is it S tier? It's an S tier common. Like for a common card, it's really good. If anything, it should be bumped up to Umcon, just because it is that good. So we'll put it in S for now, but if S gets too cluttered, I might move it down to A. So the next card we've got here is Crescendo. Uh, it's a basic card. Enter Wrath, Exhaust. So Wrath is a stance where you deal double damage. And you receive double damage. So I think... Well, Crescendo's... It's not a base deck card, but it feels like it should be one. Crescendo Plus is just what? for zero uh is okay crescendo is a good card if you've already got good damage cards in your deck and you've got ways to go back into calm so you can kind of crescendo do your thing get back to calm and you're not receiving double damage it's situational it can win you games but uh it's just okay it's not like Amazing best card. So with Crescendo, uh, Crescendo. You want to get your Sean Connery in there. We'll put it in B tier, above Conjure Blade. Yeah. No. I think it's A tier. I think we can move that, conclude down to the bottom of A tier as well. The next card we've got here is... I believe it's Crush Joints. Crush Joints, okay. Uh, one mana, eight damage. If the last card played in combat was a skill, apply one vulnerable. Great way to start your turn. Find two vulnerable, now you're talking. That is... Worth picking up upgraded. At like tier one, uh, act one, act two, act three. An upgraded Crush Joints is great. An upgraded is, is good. But it's not great. It's a it's the definition of a good B tier card, I think. So with that in mind, we'll put it top of B tier. Because it can set you up if you have vulnerable and you have double damage, it can pretty much wreck a lot of decks, a lot of uh, enemies. So the next card we've got Cut Through Fate. Fantastic. You get to scry and draw a card. Uh, the damage is just a nice bonus as well. Uh, it's technically an attack, so, you know, it's good. But yeah, look at that. Deal 7 damage, scry 2, draw 1 card, upgraded, scry 3. Now, 9 damage is cute, but uh, the main reason you pick one of these up is for card draw. Uh, if it gets you drawing the better cards in the deck, then Cut Through Fate is a good common card to get. So, uh, we'll put that in A tier. That's not the right card. That's the right card. Better than Crescendo. Uh, so I'm going to move Carve Reality down as well. Because it's good, but it's not great. So what we're we looking at next. Uh, next card. Receive Reality. Add gain four block, add safety into your hand. So it's kind of like the alternative block version of that card, but... Uh, I don't know. With... With this deck, you want to be dealing as much damage as possible. If you have one of these in your deck and you've already taken a couple of defends out, then fair enough. That's a justified reason to take and deceive reality. But if it's just a baseline deck and that's like the first card you're offered, you're not going to pick this up, are you? 
a gremlin knob's just going to laugh at you if you show up to the game with this. So later in the game it is more powerful, but that's after you've kind of built your deck around what you want to build it around. So let's put it... Yeah, I'll put it below Conjure Blade. I think I'm being a bit harsher with these tier lists for... Purely because there's just so many good cards with the Watcher. You've got to be tough. Uh, Defend. Now this is a one of the cards of all time. Uh, where are we going to put Defend in the tier list? Uh, I don't know. How about we just put it in its own special tier? Fantastic. Defend. And while we're at it, let's just get the base attack in there as well so we don't have to think too much about it. Where would you be? Base attack. Next, we can follow up with the card. Follow up. Uh, deal 10 damage, and you've got a way to get mana back. So essentially, with conditions, it's a zero cost for seven mana. Doesn't have recursion like Flurry of Blows, but uh, dealing 11 damage when it's upgraded, that's like 22 doubled. It's good. It's not great, but it's a good card. There's this thing with the Watcher decks where you can get like two or three good common damage dealing cards and then last year the full game out of all those common cards it's one of the better ones but it is situational but it is 11 damage for free oh I'm kind of torn this one's tougher than I first expected why would you put follow up Let's put it beside Crush Joints. Deserves to be there. Kings of B tier. Oh no! Where were we? So we've just done follow up. Foreign Influence. Uh, it's a really fun meme tart card. I mean, if you want to pick it up first act and if you know you're not going to win and it's a bit of fun, go for it. Uh, if you're serious about beating Ascension 20 and you got the option to pick this card up, uh, don't. Just don't. It's too random. Uh, there's a reason Prismatic Shard is seen as a meme relic because it is so unreliable. Better than fasting, though. Nobody likes fasting. So, next card we've got uh, Foresight. At the start of your turn, Scry 3. Would you pick it up by itself? Possibly. Uh, it helps you filter out good cards and get rid of bad cards, so it has great utility. Costs one, so that's good. Uh, Scry has some interaction, but I wouldn't be picking up Scry cards primarily to build a good deck. So out of the Scry cards, I'd say Foresight is one of the better ones. Uh, got to give it credit where it's due. Uh, I'd probably pick a Foresight over Conjure Blade. Would I pick it over Establishment? Yeah, yeah, I think I would. So we'll just put it there. So next up we've got Alt. Uh, zero for three block. If you're in Wrath, gain nine block. I mean... It's a great card in theory, but... Uh, if you're in Wrath and you're looking for a card, it, you want something to get you out of Wrath at the end of turn. You don't want something that's going to deal with a load of block. So, very situational. If you have a high Wrath deck, I'd be tempted to pick one of these up and just one if you're low on defense, if you've already got a couple of defense out the deck. So, situational. Not horrible, but not good. Uh, better than Blasphemy. I would potentially pick it up, like, I'm thinking, yeah, is it going to get a B tier? It's going to get a pity B tier at the end. Because it's, be it's better than the C, C tier cards. Genuinely. Uh, next up, Indignation. If you're in Wrath, apply three vulnerable, otherwise enter Wrath. Uh, it makes a good situation even better. It's a win more card. Uh, so think about it. If you've got vulnerable... Creatures 
receive 50% more damage. If you've got Wrath, you're doubling your damage. So let's let's just say you've got a basic attack. Six damage. You double that. That's 12 damage. And then they take 50% more damage from attacks. That's a, what, 18 damage? Uh, it does apply to all enemies, so that is good. Uh, I feel like we're we're bloating out A tier a bit too much, but uh, yeah, yeah, I would put it in A tier. Let's let's be real here. It is a definite option, something you would pick up. Uh, put it below empty mind there. So the next card we've got is inner peace. If you're calm, draw three cards. Otherwise, enter calm. Uh, yeah, this is really good. If you've already got a deck that's looking for a way to draw cards then this is the way to do it you can put yourself in calm out of wrath you can draw more cards if you've got a couple of zero cost cards that's pretty cool if not you've got yourself out of wrath and if you've got one mana left then probably gonna have to play a defense card but this can save you from wrath's downside and it can draw you a load of cards so before we go over, yeah, draw four cards for one mana is really good to begin with. Uh, Enter and Calm is also a good option. It's kind of double situational in that regard. So let's see where we put it on the list here. How about this? We put it here, but we've moved Devotion down here. Yeah, that looks all right. I love B tiers looking. That. Uh, I might have to put a halt down in the top of C tier. Maybe evaluate down here as well. Yeah, that looks a bit right. Looks better than it was. More accurate. So next one we have is judgment. Uh, if the enemy has thirty or less hit points, set the hit point to zero. Sounds like a great card for one mana. Is it a great card in practice, though? It's a skill, so that's downside. Uh, it can help eliminate small enemies on Act 2. Because if you pick it up Act 1, it can deal with a lot of enemies, but the further you go in the game, the less powerful this is going to get. So uh, by the time you reach boss act, judgment's just a crutch. Uh, yeah, technically you could deal 40 damage but it's so situational it might not get past B tier uh, I think it is a C tier card but it's a good C tier card does that make sense? I think it makes sense it makes sense in my head so next up what have we got uh, just lucky no Zero mana to scry to and a bit of block, bit of damage sounds sounds just lucky. And it's just okay. Zero cost to deal damage is always good, especially when you've got Wrath going, but uh, it's not playing to any strengths. It's just giving you a little bit of advantage. The only downside to this is it's taken up a spot in your deck and it's a vital spot that could be used by something like an empty fist or a cut through fate so uh we'll put it in a low b tier nah we'll put it in c tier yeah would i pick it every time no uh it's situational but i would pick it more often than not so next up we've got lessons learned uh if you pick this up at one this is a really good card. If you pick it up at the end of Act 2, it's an okay card. But by the time you've finished Act 2, you've got an idea of what you want to upgrade and how you want to upgrade it. The upside to this is it is permanent residual advantage. It's that you're gaining and making a better deck every time you play this and trigger it. So I would... Would I put this nest here? Probably. Where would I put it in S tier is the question I've got. Where in S tier does Lesson Learn fit? Uh, yeah. Do you know, looking at the tier list, I want to move Diva Form up 
because I like it so much, but I know it's not that good. Lesson learned. I'm going to put it at the bottom above Flurry of Blows. Yeah, that's where it should be. You can build your deck around this. Uh, next up, like water. At the end of your turn, if you're in calm, gain some block. Uh, it's a good way to gain block, I suppose. Um, is it an instant pick? No, because you're not always going to be in calm. If you're doing the whole stance switching route, then calm might help you, but it's not going to be the main focus. You're going to focus on wrath. Hmm. Why do we put it in the tier list? Like water is uh, just below empty body B tier. That's where I'm going to put it. I mean, it's a powerful card if you're going to be in block. Uh, when you get to Act 3, you already know what your deck's about, so you've got a better idea if you're going to pick it or not. So, at least it's decisive in that sense. It's not like a should I or shouldn't I. It's a case of, yes, I'll take it in Act 1, or no, I won't take it in Act 3. Master Reality. When a card is created during combat, upgrade it. Mm hmm it's relying on other cards it's a potential curse if you don't have a good way to generate cards effectively like alpha for example then this it just helps other cards it doesn't help you do something by yourself uh it's not a bad card it's not actively sabotaging your run it just doesn't bring a lot to the deck I'm gonna put it here Gotta be better than Conjure Blade though. Yeah, I, that's the B tier. It's filling out the B tier now. So, next card we're looking at is Meditate. Put a card from your discard pile on your hand and retain it. Enter Calm, end your turn. Uh, this is specially upgraded. This is such a powerful card. It's worth picking up, even if it's got the end your turn downside to it. Uh. Where does it sit on the tier list, though? I'm going to meditate on this too long, then. I mean, it's card draw. With that, you retain. Uh, yeah, we'll put it above follow-up. Shall we? No. Yeah. Let's put it above follow up. Let's put it at the top of B tier. I think that's a good solid place for it. Next card, Mental Fortress. Whenever you change stances, gain a chunk of block. Uh, really good, in my opinion. Uh, if you pick one of these up early and you know you're going to be switching stances a lot, it can be one of your main defense cards. Uh, when you Potentially, if you've got it upgraded, you put one of these out, you change your stance twice a turn. That's a free 12 block for one mana uh, I'm going to put it in A tier no it, it's situational it depends on if you've got a lot of stance changing cards in your deck already if you don't have that it's just okay uh, yeah put it above conclude yeah I like that I like that position in A tier so next up, we've got Nirvana. Whenever you scry, gain three block. Great beta art, mediocre card. Um, if you're not scrying, this is just a, a burden in your hand. Uh, so you have to build a scry deck and then hope that you pick Nirvana. So with that in mind, uh, where does Nirvana go? It's C tier. It's lower than... Yeah, I think it's around around the... That feels correct there. It just feels right. Remember, I didn't say it was a bad card. I just said it's a very situational card. Uh, Omniscience. A full mana that's like out of the ordinary. You have to do extra things just to get this. But you get to play a card twice. Uh, if it, you've got a good, powerful power in your deck, then 
drawing this on the first turn and having enough mana to play it is a game changer. Goes down to three if you upgrade it, so that makes it even better. Uh, for example, you've got Deva Form in your deck. You can't draw Deva Form first time every time. You get one of these in your deck, you've doubled the chances of playing Deva Form first turn. So, with that in mind, where are we going to put it on the setup? Uh, it's an eight here. Let's put it next to Deva Form. Let's swap it around with Alpha, actually. We'll put it here. We'll put Alpha down here. Maybe down here. Uh, yeah, Alpha's too much of a swing card. We're looking for consistency, powerful impact on that turn. Uh, Perseverance, ooh. It's just okay. I mean, it gets better as the day goes on, but you want something that's dealing effects to the board on this turn. Uh, technically, it's ramp, but it's not very good ramp. Okay, let me put it this way. If you've got two block cards in your deck in Act 3 and you're offered this, take it. If you've got five block cards in your deck and you're offered this, don't take it. So, uh, where do we put it on the tier list? Uh, I feel like there's a lot of Bs. It deserves to be a B. Doesn't deserve a C. Because it's not horrible, it's just okay. So let's put it, yeah, let's put it here. Bottom of B. So next card we've got is Prey. Uh, gain 3 Mantra. Shuffle an insight into your draw pile. The insight's the powerful bit. The mantra's okay. Again, it's good if you're working with other cards. If it's by itself, I wouldn't pick one up. Even with the upgrade, you need to play it twice. Three times, just to have an effect. Uh, it's good. It's not great. It's just... It's nice to have. But you're not going to be winning any games with it. Uh, unless you've already got Devotion there. So let's put it beside Devotion there. It's on the same level, but technically it's better than Devotion because you get the card draw from it as well. Yeah, I like that. Pressure points. Uh, it's the meme card of the deck. It's the claw. All enemies lose hit points equal to their mark. If there was more mark cards in the deck, it might have a chance of being powerful, but because that's the only one in the deck, um, even if you've got a deck of five cards and you're drawing it every turn, it's still not good. It's just okay. It's not even just okay. It's, it's kind of like one of the worst ways to scale damage. I wouldn't pick one up. Act 1, Act 2, no. Maybe Act 1. If I was desperate for damage. Uh, it's a C tier. I wouldn't disrespect it enough to put it in D tier. But it's not good good. It's not mediocre good either. <laughs> if when you put it like that. So uh, the card after that. Is. Prostrate. Again. Another mantra card. Out of the mantra cards. It does have utility because it's zero cost. And you're gaining a chunk of block. But uh, the mantra is not the powerful part, it's the block part. If you manage to get enough mantra, you've built a deck around gaining mantra. Good luck. You've played all your mantra cards, you're in mantra now. Have you got decent attacks? Is it just basic strikes? You know? The whole Nirvana thing is... Sorry, the whole mantra thing is just great idea but in practice it's outclassed by other mechanics so with that in mind uh put it in the b tier dunk it in the bottom next up protect retain gain 12 block or gain gain 16 uh i'd say this is a good defense card i mean the retain helps it uh if i was offered one of these act one i'd take it if i was offered one act two I'd consider taking it. As defense cards go, the, putting up a big chunk of defense with retain is probably worth a high B. Is it worth an A tier is the question. Uh, yeah. 
Let's stick it in A tier. Above conclude. So next one we've got is Ragnarok. Uh, this is a trap card for new players. You deal in 5 damage to random enemies 5 times. You upgrade it, you deal in 6 for 6. That's 36 damage for 3 mana. Uh, even if you're in Wrath. The fact that it's hitting random enemies just doesn't make it as good as it first looks on paper. So uh, as rare cards go, there are better ones. As damage cards go, there are more consistent ones. Uh, I don't think we should put it in C tier because it is a card that you could pick up and use. We'll give it a B tier for now, a Sympathy B. Next up, Reach Heaven uh, through Violence. Two mana, deal 10 damage with potential to deal 20 damage for zero cost. Double to 40 damage. It's one of the better attack cards. Now imagine if you get a Necronomicon, you get one of these guys in your deck, and it's upgraded. You're potentially dealing 30 damage, two mana, and then another 40 damage later in the game. If there's one card I'm going to pick that deals, it helps out on later turns, it's Reach Heaven. I'm high on this card. Uh, I think it's going to go he here in the A tier. Yeah. I think that's a good spot for it in A tier. So, Rush Down. When you're in a Wrath, draw two cards. Now, this is a good way to draw cards. If you're playing a Wrath deck, if you've got a couple of ways to get into Wrath, that's like how many extra cards you're going to draw, and then you combine that over the amount of games you play, it's going to be high up there. So how high is it? A tier? Yeah, A tier. Low A tier? I'd pick one over Protect. I'd pick one over Mental Fortress. But next to Empty Mind. Above Empty Mind, yeah. They're both good uh, ways to draw cards. Sanctity. Gain six block. If the last card played in this combat was a skill, draw two cards. No, I'm not feeling it. It's another defense card. Uh, that's just going to do okay amount of defense. You might draw with it, but you're probably not going to draw with it. So, Sanctity... To put a man's card draw, there are better ways to draw cards, but if you don't have any card draw in your deck and you're desperate for it and you don't have enough defense, then I suppose it's okay. But it beat you. Next up, Sands of Time. Deal 20 damage, potentially 26 damage. So that's like 52 upgraded. Uh, when retained, lower the cost by one this combat. This is one of those cards that, yeah, it might help you later on, but. Uh, it's a time bomb but it's not as good as time bomb the actual card but it's a good way to deal a big chunk of damage potentially for free if you've got enough patience and you can set up a wrath form signs of time we'll give it a low A because it has potential big potential you just need to be lucky with it now, Sash Whip, uh, for a common one cost, deal 8 damage and the potential to apply 2 weak if it's upgraded. Yeah, that's a good card. It's a good defense card, even though it's an attack. Which I know it's contradictory, but yeah, definitely worth picking one up if you need one. If you're desperate for ways to deal damage, then Sash Whip's a good option. Put an extra follow up and flying sleeves because it's in that same vein. Crush joints. Like all these cards are your basic attacks that deal a good chunk of damage and have something that helps. So it should be good there. So the exception is those two, which are kind of higher up. So, slash whip next one is scroll. Roll cards until your hand is full for one mana. Yes and yes. Like, but I can't see any downside to this. I can see my green screen because the sun's setting, but I can't see many downsides to this. Uh, pick one up, no doubt. 
I'd put this in S tier. Uh, upgrade, you get it for zero cost. Even better, more mana to play around with. So, scroll. Uh, yeah, I'll put it against Flurry of Blows up there. So, next card we're looking at is Signature Move. Uh, no, it's rubbish. Dealing 40 damage, but if there's no attacks in your hand, there's a good chance you've got, not got two mana to play it. Uh, if you've got a, like a high defense deck, then maybe, but if you've got a high defense deck as Watcher, you you fundamentally got wrong grasp of how it works. Uh, I don't know if I'd put it D tier, because it's not that bad. Put it C tier. Uh, no, I would put it in D tier. King in D tier, because too situational. Uh, good card if you can trigger it. Good luck trying to trigger it. Wow, this green screen's going crazy now. Give me one second. I think we can deal with a little bit of lens flare. So, uh, signature move. Uh, next one is Simmering Fury. The start of your next turn. Mm. Enter Wrath and draw two cards. Mm. Uh, this sets you up for the next turn to steamroll the opposition. It's one of the few cards I do like giving you with next turn abilities. So, Simmering Fury, uh, I'd rate it as a higher card. Definitely. How high is it, though? That's the question. Uh, we'll give it an A tier. Above Sands of Time. That feels about right. Next up, Spirit Shield. Gain three block for each card in your hand. If you're drawing lots of cards, this is like the one good defense card you can pick up for a rare. Uh, I don't have much to say about it, just because does what it says on the tin, deals a lot of defense. Uh, I'd put it... Would you put it in A tier or S tier? Won't give it an S tier card. Yeah. I think it deserves it. Spirit Shield. Strike we've already done. Study. One of the better beta arts as well. At the end of your turn, shuffle an insight into your draw pile. If it's one mana, it's really good. If it's two mana, it's just okay. Uh, it's a good way to draw cards. There's not much else to say about it. It's a really good way to draw cards. Is it an instant pick? No. Is it a great pick when you've already got something to synergize with it? Yes. Uh, but study at low A. It's playable. It's definitely something you would choose to pick up. But it's not an instant pick. Uh, next up, Swivel. Gain 8 block. Next attack you play costs 0. Great in theory, mediocre in practice. If it was 1 cost for gain 4 block, then yeah, that would be a great card. Uh, no. It's too expensive. I mean, you basically play in 2 cards by playing this and the next one for 0, but... I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. It's not my vibe. I know we shouldn't rank it on vibes, but I'm just... No. That ain't it. Low B tier. I recognise its merits, but I'm not a fan. Uh, talk to the hands. Now that's a card I'd pick up. That's an S tier. Instant pick. Deal 5 damage. Whenever your enemy attacks, gain 2 block. You're going to be dealing lots of damage. You're going to be attacking all the time. So if you get this status working, gaining three block when it's upgraded every time you attack, that extra six, extra nine defense every turn. For one mana. Yeah, it's what, again, it's one of those cards that's technically an attack, but it's one of the better defense cards in the game. Uh, I'd put it above Spirit Shield. Not going to lie. Sounds strange, but yeah. Next up, uh, Tantrum. Hmm. Great Act 1. Good way of dealing a lot of damage. If you've got a way to gain strength, it really synergizes well with that. Uh, when you get to Act 3 or Act 4, like Boss Act, it might 
not have as much strength as it did have but yeah act one and act two this is a great card to pick up and uh, like dealing damage of any th type four times is always good you get your thing like something like a kunai then you're laughing so uh tantrum let's stick it in a tier uh above reach heaven if anything we need to move crescendo down because it's it's just good it's not great let's move that down there and that reach heaven and tantrum is a bit higher up there maybe put it above eruption oh if we're gonna do that we might as well just put it above cut through fate there yeah high a tier by the looks of it next up third eye gain a bunch of blocks cry a lot uh it's just okay uh you wouldn't instant pick it you wouldn't pick it in act three or act four unless you really needed defense or you really needed to scry for a specific card so it fills a niche but the niche is not very popular uh is it worth d tier no we'll put it here if we move pressure points down and move blasphemy down to d tier how does that sound Next up, Tranquility, Retain, Enter Calm, Exhaust, if you upgrade it at zero cost. Uh, I'm deliberately going to put it directly next to Crescendo, uh, just because it is pretty much the other side of the coin. Where is this guy here? Here we go. I prefer Crescendo over Tranquility, but they're both equally good ways to set up uh, stances. Uh, vault there's an instant pick you just get free turn yeah it costs a load of mana but you're getting a free turn so you know how powerful that is like magic the gathering cards have been banned for doing that uh what's the downside to vault i mean even if you don't end up playing any other cards in that turn you can kind of choose to discard your hand and draw a full new card uh, full new grip And I'm gonna put it in above is it above scroll? Yeah. Consecrate needing to move down here? Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks like a good S tier now. Uh yeah, as you can see a lot of the res are S tier, where they should be. See there's some of the other decks where the rare cards are just not as good good as some of the more powerful commons you take the shiv deck from uh silent for an example but with the watcher you do just get a lot of genuinely good powerful cards so vigilance gain a big chunk of block enter calm it's a base deck card it's not as good as uh, eruption it's still good i mean it's one of the basic ways to gain calm change your stance so you're going to be using it a lot uh i think we, we'll give it a, a nice solid high b tier erupted oh uh, sorry upgraded you know, let's give it an a tier above concludes above santa time not above simmering fury i think we can move protect down there I'd rather play it over Protect just because of the Calm. There's more potential for big powerful plays there and swings. So next up, Wallop. Uh, this is a great card. Think about it. If you get Wrath, if you get uh, Vulnerable, if you get any other way to make it deal more damage, you're gaining more block. It's like Dash, but better. Uh, well, it's better if you've got the correct synergies. Dash is a better card by itself, but that's in a different deck, so it's not relevant. So with Wallop, where do we put the Wallop? Where do we put the Wallop? Is it above Tantrum? It's definitely above Cutthroat Fate. I don't know if it's above Tantrum. Yeah, how about this? I'll put Wallop here, but I'll move Empty... Fist and battle him down below. 
I'm okay with Tantrum and Wallet being top of A tier. So next up, Wave of the Hand. Whenever you gain block this turn, apply one week to all enemies. For one mana, it's really expensive. That sounds strange, I know. Uh, when it's upgraded, it's okay. But if you're getting to a point where you're playing this and then playing more block cards, you're not playing a good game. If you've got natural, easy ways of getting blocked through power, then yeah, that's okay. Uh, it does synergize very well with uh, shield... Uh, What's it called again? Uh, Spirit Shield. But by itself, it's just okay. It's not going to win your games. It's going to potentially negate damage. But I suppose it's good against enemies that have like single high impact attacks. But I'm not going to be like frothing at the mouth trying to pick one up. Uh, we'll put it. I'm not going to put it in C tier because it is pickable. Uh, probably above Master Reality. Just. Um, probably going to move Conjure Blade up a little bit. Yeah, I'm okay with it being there. So next up we have... Weave. Um, if you're getting Scry cards in your deck already, Weave's good. It's okay, it's alright. Uh, it's kind of like a poor man's uh, flurry of blows. I don't know if it deserves a C tier though. Because all the scry cards are dragging the other scry cards down. Just by virtue of its mechanic being okay and not great. Doesn't deserve C tier. Uh, deserves a high B. Or mid B. No. Put it above Master Reality. So next card we've got is Wheel Kick. Is it an S tier? It's definitely A tier, but is it S tier? Big chunk of damage. Yes, it costs two, but it's worth it. And you draw cards, so... Uh, what's double of 20? 40? 40 damage? Hmm? I like it. I like it. So... Wheel kick. Better than battle him. I'd pick it act one, act two, act three. Maybe not act three. Yeah, maybe. Depending on how the deck is. Better than wallop. Is it better than wallop? No. See, tantrum, wallop, wheel kick. These three are kind of like king of A-tier. And I'm okay saying that. There's no shame in that next card we've got is Windmill Strike. Retain, deal 7 damage, and it creases every time you retain it. It's just okay. 2 mana cost, and you're going to be holding on to it for like 3 or 4 turns before it's even worth playing. Uh, I mean, I like the card, but let's be brutally honest here. It's not a very good card. It's an okay card to deal damage. Uh, Windmill Strike is a B tier. You know, I've, I've seen these cards. I think it deserves higher than that. So does Swivel. Put Swivel up there. And let's move it above these two, actually. Yeah, that looks okay there. We're not giving Swivel, it's you. I think we should move Swivel up. Uh, better than Forset, yeah. I think it looks okay there. So Windmill Strike, it is what it is. There's no point worrying too much about it. I love you, but it's not fantastic. Uh, Wish, there is a fantastic card. Uh, spend three mana. You're spending all the mana for your turn. It's got options. It's got utility. Uh, if you think you've got the fight in the bag, it's got ways to gain extra gold, which is always good. And that's just meta progression for the whole thing. So, is it S tier? Mm, it is three mana, so... Act one, if you pick one up early, it's useless. Too expensive. Act two, if you have mana relic, it's good. If you pick it up act three, I would say yeah. So where are we going to put wish? 
A tier. Definitely A tier. We'll put it high up there. Under the trio kings right there. I mean, it's powerful, but it's expensive. Big risk, big reward. Next up, worship. Gain five mantra. Even if you upgrade it for two mana, you're only gaining five mantra. If you've already got mantra cards in your deck, then maybe. If you've got a brilliance, then it helps that. Uh, but mantra and scar scry are just not worth the investment, in my opinion. I mean, again, it's like a cornerstone ability. It's a great ability in theory, but I think this is going to be B tier. Put it above Master Rook. Uh, above Weave, yeah. That's a good place to put it. And next up, Wreath of Flame. Uh, no. It's just not good. Uh, there's not much to say about it. Your next attack deals 5 damage. Potential for 10 damage. Uh, works well with Tantrum. But by itself, it's not exciting. It's a card I would actively avoid. Just because it it's a mediocre OK card and a great deck. So uh, I think... Put it in the trap card deck. Okay, so there you have it. That's the full tier list. I think that's everything. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Uh, leave a comment down below and tell me what I've got wrong. And the other side of it is, if you're not sure about this, then they've got three other cards. Three other cards? I've got three other videos in the playlist about the other characters. So at least you can have an idea of how they play as well. Anyway, thanks for hanging around, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.